We sailed on the Celebrity Eclipse in March 2024. It was our first time in a boat this large, and we got to know it pretty well by the end of the cruise. We embarked on the deck four, starting in the Grand Foyer next to the Martini Bar. The aft, or rear of deck four, is the upper level of the Moonlight Sonata main dining room. This is one of the restaurants that was included in our fare, and we ate many meals here. Cellar Masters specializes in high-end wines, but we didn't sample their selection. There's also a row of Deck 4 duty-free shops, and shopping is highly encouraged by the cruise line. Fortune's Casino is also on Deck 4, operating whenever the ship was in international waters. We gambled a little bit, adding to the ship's fortunes. You can play on funds charged to your stateroom, and there's an ATM that dispenses $150 US bills. The Future Cruise Office has experts you can discuss upcoming itineraries with if you're looking to book another cruise. The Quasar Game Room has some fun options, and Celebrity Central is a small theater. It's not the biggest screen, but not bad, and you can take food and drinks in with you to watch whatever is showing. The four, or front of Deck 4, is the main Eclipse Theater. Deck 3 has the floor of the Grand Foyer, and Deck 2 with the medical facilities is as low as passengers can access. Aft of Deck 3 is the lower level of Moonlight Sonata, with our open seating meal option, we were always seated on Deck 4. The food overall was excellent, but we'll cover that later. The shore excursions and customer service desks are also in Deck 3. Forward on Deck 5, the upper level to the Eclipse Theater is where we preferred to sit compared to down below. Many lectures and stage productions were shown here and we'll cover the excellent entertainment later on in the video. Deck 5 also has promenades where the lifeboats are accessible. They're great places to watch the sea and get fresh air on nice days. An art gallery is midship on Deck 5, all for sale, and another bar. Sushi on 5 is one of the upcharged specialty restaurants on board and the only one that served a la carte, but we never ate there. There's also a cafe with specialty coffees, desserts, and gelato, all for additional cost and another place we never tried. Deck 5 aft holds the Ensemble Lounge, a place where we enjoyed an occasional drink and live music. We'll have more about the various onboard entertainment later. Behind Ensemble, there's Michael's Club for Celebrity Elite members and several other fine dining specialty restaurants. Again, we never sampled them because the included food was so good. The bulk of the staterooms are on decks 6 through 8. Ours was on deck 8, all the way forward. We booked a prime ocean view cabin, and compared to the last river cruise we took, it was huge. Even the next level upgrade with a terrace was tiny by comparison. and the cheaper inside stateroom felt claustrophobic. Our forward-facing window gave us some spectacular views without ever leaving the room. The king bed was very comfortable. The bathroom and shower more spacious than we'd feared. And there was plenty of storage space. complemented the existing hooks with magnetic ones we brought along. There was only a single location for electrical outlets, but we made it work. The TV had a useful ship's information channel, 
and there were daily briefings from the captain and cruise director. Deck 9 is also mostly staterooms, with a midship card room to chill and play games. Decks 10 and 11 hold a two-floor library, one of the more impressive spaces on the ship. Deck 12 has the outdoor pool with four hot tubs and the adults-only enclosed solarium with two hot tubs. Both areas have showers and towels. A full spa with massage, acupuncture, facials, etc. is also on Deck 12. But even with the promotional discounts, rates were like at a five-star hotel, so we passed. The gym is well equipped with machines and free weights, and we use it a few times. The Persian Garden is a private relaxation space for elite members and those who purchase daily access. Forward on Deck 14, there's no Deck 13. The Sky Lounge is an enormous space for relaxing, reading, listening to music, or having a drink from the bar. Events are also held here, like an introductory meeting with the captain. Midship on Deck 14, the eighth mile long jogging track was pretty popular, though it did get cold and windy at times on our cruise. The ship itself is a fifth mile long, so there was plenty of space for walking indoors. But if the weather cooperated, the outdoor track had some incredible views. Aft on deck 14, the Ocean View Cafe was our second included restaurant. The buffet always had an extensive selection of different cuisines for every meal. Including cheeses, salads and desserts. We ate in the Moonlight Sonata when we wanted a more formal restaurant experience. Menus were published ahead of time, but the food looked fantastic most meals on most days. The variety and quality was so good, we felt no need to bother with any of the specialty restaurants. We did splurge on a bottle of wine when it was surf and turf night. And one evening, we couldn't decide what to have, so we had everything. Another evening, they gave us an anniversary cake marking our 30th this year. One morning, we requested a Filipino breakfast from the kitchen, and when we mentioned an issue to our waiter about one of the dishes, the head waiter then sent a plate of chocolates to our stateroom. The most convenient place for us to eat breakfast was the Spa Cafe forward on deck 12. The selection was simple, but delicious and just four floors up from our stateroom. Deck 15 is elevated fore and aft. Forward has kids clubs and a basketball pickleball court. The Sunset Bar is aft of Deck 15. And the lawn has many available grassy activities. And it's actual grass. For 20 US dollars, the artist at Hot Glass will help you heat glass, dip it in a variety of colors, reheat, shape, and cut it for a pretty cool personalized souvenir. There was no shortage of live entertainment on board, mostly indoors, including daily dance classes, and sometimes poolside. But the nightly shows in the main theater were top notch. With a variety of acts and talent, we saw several shows throughout the cruise. But our time on the eclipse itself was just part of a cruise around the tip of South America. So join us in the next video where we take you through all the stops of our incredible 13-day voyage.